lost two debates to me in 2020. And since then, he hadn't shown up for debate. Now he's acting like he wants to debate me again. Well, make my day, pal. I'll even do it twice. So let's pick the dates, Donald. I hear you're free on Wednesdays. <laughs> All right. Six cuts. On Wednesdays. Uh, Fox News alert. President Biden speaking out on social media about taking on Donald Trump on the debate stage. The Biden campaign proposing two face-offs before early voting begins, one in June and the other in September. Vice presidential debate in July after the RNC. All of this after Trump's criminal trial ends here in New York. The great Sean Hannity joins us right now. So, Sean, to deliver this message, it took them six cuts to get the president's uh, answers and say yes but, to Donald Trump. Is he ready? Uh, LJ, let me tell you something. This made my day. This <laughs> made my morning. This this is yeah. great news if you're if you're Donald J. Trump today for a lot of reasons. And if I was President Trump, I'd say, why not make it uh, Ju June, July, August, September? Yeah. Let's have four, Joe. Really make my day. You want to have a debate? Let's have debates. And I, I think this is phenomenal news for a couple of reasons. One, uh, I think that Donald Trump will wipe the floor floor with him. And I don't care if we get the State of the Union jacked up Joe with caffeine, Red Bull, <laughs> or whatever, uh, or we get regular Joe that could barely walk off the stage last <laughs> night. I think it's a great opportunity. Also, he proposed a format that I think is extraordinarily favorable for the president, which is if you're not talking, your mic's not on. I think one of the difficulties in 2020 is probably Donald Trump in that first debate was too aggressive. This will then kind of put, you know, rails in place so that one person talks at a time. And the more Joe talks, I think the worse he does. Mm -hmm. Here's what's really happening, though, in my mind behind the scenes. Um, I've known James Carville, for example, for many, many years. I've debated him many times around the country. I actually love the guy. He's so fun to be around. He's smart. Don't ever underestimate him. And his most recent video that I saw, he was angry. Everything we are throwing up against Donald Trump is not working. So he's furious when he's saying this. I know, I know him well. He's pretty angry. And he's been, he's been basically a voice in the wilderness telling the Democratic Party mm -hmm. that, that this guy is, is really not fit for office. David Axelrod, again, not a dumb guy, has been saying the same thing. Van Jones, in his way, has been saying it. Maureen Dowd's been saying it. These are prominent Democratic voices. So what do we have here? We have a situation where nothing that they've been saying about Donald Trump has been working. The lie about the economy being great is laughable right. because 60 percent of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Uh, for three years, we heard the border is secure and the border is closed. Now they want to blame Donald Trump. Right. That's not working. The, the disaster, which is Joe Biden uh, surrendering in the war on terror and abandoning our ally Israel. And by the way, really responsible for a quid pro quo, the very thing that they impeached sure. Donald Trump for over Ukraine. He's trying to say congressionally appropriated monies will not go to Israel unless you do what I sure. say. That would be cause for impeachment based on Joe Biden and the Democrats' own right. definition. But I don't want to digress here. So I actually view Joe Biden's make my day tape, which him saying it kind of made my day, uh, <laughs> As, as a Hail Mary pass, yeah. they're desperate. Hey, sure. But it does one more thing, and then I'll shut up. What The other thing that it does, and for all the people that have been speculating that, you know, come August, come the Democratic National Convention, they're going to push Joe Biden out. Uh-uh. Yeah, he's the nominee. This locks right. him in. Yeah. Here's their, he sure. is their That's guy. Sure. Sean? If, and and that, to, that would be, I think, the matchup that the country needs. You have two... Two people that have served four terms. You get to compare and contrast their records. You compare mm -hmm. it on law and order and safety right. and security. You compare it on the borders. You compare it on the economy. America abdicating its role on the world stage as the leader of liberty and freedom right. uh, and surrendering in the war on terror. I'll take that debate every day of the week. Okay, so we have some other details uh, of this letter that uh, Biden sent and said, we're, I, I'll do two debates. Uh, Biden's team has requested that only broadcast networks that hosted Republican primary debates in 2016 and Democratic primary debates in 2020 will be
will be eligible to host this year's event. Only four networks, CNN, ABC, Telemundo, and CBS hosted debates for both. So Fox is going to get uh, frozen out of it. Uh, he also proposed that the moderator be selected by the broadcast host from their regular personnel with firm time limits for answers and stuff like that. Stuff they've got to negotiate, but nonetheless, uh, Fox will be frozen out of hosting the debate. Well, I personally am offended because I thought I moderated a really good debate between Gavin Newsom mm -hmm. and Governor mm -hmm. Ron DeSantis. Mm -hmm. yeah. The fact that I'm not at the top of the list is just <laughs> shocking to me. Uh, or the fact that any of you four, which we, I think would do a great job, uh, it doesn't surprise me. But fake news, CNN should be, right. you know, immediately dispensed. Here's what They're Trump a left wing just, Here's what Trump said. Yeah. Here's what they Trump just said. Way, they're all left wing networks, but. With that said, I still like Donald Trump against Joe Biden any day of the week. I'll right. take that battle. That he, ju he just commented to Brooke Singman this. The proposed June and early September dates are fully acceptable to me. Uh, he told Fox Digital, I'll provide my own transportation. <laughs> <laughs> also told her uh, he's ready to go anytime, anywhere, any place. Just something to keep in mind. The reason why Joe Biden's doing this, the reason why he's doing all these interviews, the reason why he did the massive tariff is because he knows he's losing. And is in a way, right. is this a Hail right. Mary, Sean? Is this a Hail Mary? So I have to, this is it. Brian, Brian you're, you're so accurate here. I mean, look, James Carville said it. Nothing we're throwing at Trump is working. Mm -hmm. Nothing. And, and even lawfare. Let's assume a guilty verdict. I mean, and we can get into the trial if you want, but I would assume it. Uh, you have an abusively biased judge that should have recused himself. You, you don't even have a crime that has been defined. Uh, you, you have a New York City jury, which is never going to be favorable to any Republican conservative, and certainly not anybody with the last name Trump. So where are we here? Carville was was livid. Right. Go back and look at that tape. Play that tape. And nothing we're doing is working. This now shows how desperate the Biden campaign is. Here's one other huge advantage. The fact that these debates are proposed before early voting, yeah. there should never, ever, ever be a presidential debate right. before the voting starts. Now, I happen to be against, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks of voting. I think we need, I, I prefer... Election Day be a national holiday. I prefer paper ballots. I prefer voter ID, signature verification, chain of custody control. Uh, I prefer partisan observers observing updated voter rolls. But for that to happen, Republicans got to win elections. So right. this is a great opportunity, I think, for President Trump. And I think Joe Biden. Get that Red Bull ready in the White House because they're going to need jacked up Joe to show up. Yeah. A few Mountain Dews, right. a few, jacked few Red Bulls. Um, okay, Sean, you went out to, was it Arizona where Tombstone is? Um, where the, you went out to that set to shoot Outlaws and Lawmen, The West, which is now on Fox Nation. Episode two is dropping today. Tell us about this. Yeah. Uh, this is actually going to be really fun. Everybody's heard about Wyatt Earp. I don't know how they, they've heard about Wild Bill Hickok. Um, and, you know, I'll be honest, when I, and I think I told you guys this, I was a little, I had a little trepidation when they first approached me about this because it was a little out of my lane and my wheelhouse. And we shot this whole thing on the set of Tombstone. If you ever watched the movie Tombstone, Great, yeah. it was a very cool experience. It was the equivalent of a real movie shoot. Um, I'd not done that before. They even had a trailer. <laughs> and they said, talent only on the trailer. So I took the sign off and I, and I said, no, anybody's invited in the trailer. I don't want to be treated like a prima donna. And, uh, but we ended up having a good time. Uh, we spent a lot of hours on this. It was a collaborative effort of some really amazing, talented, gifted movie makers. And, and I'm kind of just a little bit of the face and the voice of it. But what they have put together, uh, I'm just proud to be a small part of. And we debuted number one on Fox Nation with the first episode. It gets better and better. Great. Yeah, thank you. I well, mean, Sean, I, 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 I was jealous. I'm like, how did they get the New Yorker to do this? Why couldn't the Texas do it? But I understand <laughs> you're, you're the mentor, so you get all the opportunities. But I go, oh, how did yeah, they okay. get him in the cowboy boots, the jacket, all of them? You're a little tall for the right. part. Okay. You're a little tall. Right. All of you, all of you have known me for years. Right. All of you know I despise wearing a suit. This is true. All of you know, not that I'm going to show the, you know, everybody I'm watching Fox and Friends, 
I am wearing jeans right now. <laughs> I always wear jeans Lucky. if I can, or sweatpants and a t and a long sleeve T-shirt, and I work out a lot. So uh, that's the real Sean Hannity, and uh, the fact that after 27 years I got to take my tie off and nobody noticed or complained, I'm pretty happy about. Sweet. Mm -hmm. All right. But, so but you love a tuxedo. <clears throat> What's that? You love a tuxedo. You love getting dressed up. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love it. I love, love a tuxedo. <laughs> Indeed. All right, I heard that somewhere. It. So check it out on Fox Nation. Sean, thank you very much. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Thanks guys. Sean. Great show. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.